हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू नांदीप एकेडमी फॉर यू पी सी एंड एम पी एस सी इन दिस ऑनलाइन सेशन दैट इज बेस्ड ऑन द हिंदू वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी एनालाइज एंड डिस्कस मल्टीपल चॉइस क्वेश्चन दैट आर बेस्ड ऑन द हिंदू डेटेड इलेवेंथ जनवरी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी वन लेट्स बिगिन विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन बैंडियनियम अ हाई वैल्यू मेटल यूज इन स्ट्रेंदनिंग स्टील एंड टाइटेनियम इज रिसेंटली डिस्कवर्ड इन विच स्टेट A. Assam. B. Arunachal Pradesh. C. West Bengal. Or D. Jharkhand. So this has uh, it's in news in today's newspaper, and uh, the answer here is B. Arunachal Pradesh. Yes. Uh, large deposits of vanadium have been discovered here, and vanadium is used in strengthening steel and steel and titanium. Although India requires vanadium in huge quantities, but India does not have those many sources. But this has been discovered. Uh, so, what else do we need to know about vanadium? The element elemental metal is rarely found in nature. It is discover it is recovered as a byproduct from the slag collected from the processing of vanad vanadiferous magne magnetic magnetite ores, iron ore. Vanadium is a high-value metal used in the strengthening of steel and titanium. Large deposits of vanadium of the world are are in China, followed by Russia and South Africa. China, which produces 57% of the world's vanadium, consumed 44% of the metal in 2017. India is a significant consumer of vanadium, but not a primary producer of the strategic metal. According to data provided by the Geological Survey of India, India consumes four percent of about eighty-four tons, uh, eighty-four tons of vanadium produced across the globe in two thousand seventeen. The Geological Survey of India found promising concentrations of vanadium in the Paleo-Proterozoic Carboniferous Phyllite rocks in the Depo and Tamang areas of Papam Pare district in Arunachal Pradesh. This was the first report of a primary deposit of vanadium in India with an average grade of 0.76% V2O5 vanadium pentoxide. Vanadium mineralization in Arunachal Pradesh is geologically similar to the stone coal vanadium deposits of China hosted in carboniferous shale. So that's about vanadium. Let's move on to the second question. What is lidar? L I D A R A, a remote sensing technology. B, an observatory. C, a satellite. Or D, artificial intelligence tool. So here the answer is. So here the answer is D, artificial. I'm sorry. The answer is A, remote sensing tool. Lidar, lidar is a remote sensing tool. So the answer is A. Let's see uh, what exactly lidar stands for. The lidar survey for Delhi Varanasi high speed rail corridor started from the Greater Noida where helicopter fitted with state of art aerial lidar and imagery sensors took the first flight and captured the data related to ground survey. National High Speed Rail Corporation Limited is adopting light detection and ranging survey lidar technology which provides all ground details and data in 3 to 4 months wherein this process normally takes 10 to 12 months. The ground survey is crucial activity for any linear infrastructure project as the survey provides accurate details of areas around the alignment. LIDAR which stands for light detection and ranging is a remote sensing method that uses light in the form of a pulsated laser to measure ranges variable distances to the earth. These light pulses combined with other data recorded by the airborne system generate precise three dimensional information about the shape of the earth and its surface characteristics a lidar instrument principally principally consists of a laser a scanner and a specialized gps receiver so that's about lidar let's move on to the next question what is vahan a an aerial vehicle b an unmanned vehicle c an app related to flying or d a vehicle registry vahan is D a vehicle registry rather it's a national vehicle registry so let's see uh, what else do we need to know about vahan there was no mechanism for renewal while citizens were abroad 
of their IDP when the IDP expired. Therefore, uh, an amendment was proposed and uh, the Indian citizens can now apply for renewal through the Indian embassies missions abroad from where these applications would have to move to Wahan portal in India to be considered by the respective RTOs. So this is regarding the international uh, driving license. IDP would be cour couriered to the citizens at his or her address abroad by the respective RTOs. This uh, notification also removes conditions of a medical certificate and a valid visa at the time of making a request for IDP in India. The Ministry of Road, Transport and Highways has set up a central depository that is called Wahan to, stay, to store data which is relating to all vehicles. Wahan is the National Vehicle Registry which intends to collate all the information available with road transport authorities for easy access by both citizens and regulators. So that is about Wahan, the National Vehicle Registry. Let's move on to the next question. Consider the following statements regarding payment infrastructure development fund scheme. 1. The PIDF or the Payment Infrastructure Development Scheme will be managed by RBI Deputy Governor. And 2. The scheme is intended to subsidize deployment of payment acceptance infrastructure in Tier 3 to Tier 6 sit centers. C 3. The scheme will have a special focus on northeastern states of the country. Which of the above statements is are correct? A. 1 and 2. B. 2 and 3. C. 3 and 1. Or D. All the above. In this context, it is all the above. The answer D is correct. All the statements related to the Payment Infrastructure Development Fund are correct. Let's analyze this. This is a scheme that is intended to subsidize deployment of payment acceptance infrastructure in Tier 3 to Tier 6 city centers with a special focus on the northeastern states of the country. An advisory council set up under the chairman of RBI Deputy Governor BP Kangano has been constituted for managing the PIDF. The fund will be operational for three years effective from 1st January 2021 and may be extended for two more years. The implementation of all the targets shall be monitored by RBI with assistance from Card Networks, the Indian Banks Association and the Payment Council of India. The PDIF, PI, PIDF presently had a cor has a corpus of 345 crore with Rs 245 crore contributed by the RBI and 95 crore by the major authorized card networks in the country. So that is all about PIDF. Let's move on to the next question. Consider the following statements regarding LEI. 1. The LEI is a 20-digit number used to uniquely identify parties to financial transactions worldwide. 2. LEI system will be applicable for all payment transactions of value of Rs 50 crore and above. Which of the above statements is are correct? A. Only 1. B both b only two c both one and two or d neither one nor two so here the answer is c both the statements are correct in relation to lei so let's let's see what exactly is lei and um, what do we need to know about it so lei stands for legal entity identifier it is a 20-digit number used to uniquely identify parties to financial transactions worldwide. So irrespective of where a financial transaction is carried out, it will help to identify how many parties were there and who were there. It was conceived as a key measure to improve the quality and accuracy of financial data systems for better risk management post the global financial crisis. The RBI has now decided to introduce the LEI system for all payment transactions of value of Rs 50 crore and above undertaken by entities, non-individuals using RBI-run centralized payment systems that is the real-time gross settlement RTGS and the NEFT facilities. So if a person is using the RTGS or the NEFT facility, then all the transactions, all the parties to the transactions will be, will be monitored by the legal entity identifier. The LEI has been introduced by the RBI in a phased manner for participants in over-the-counter derivative and non-derivative markets as also for large corporate borrowers. 
the rbi as a preparation for for wider introduction of lei across all payment transactions has issued directions to the member banks in india lei can be obtained from legal entity identify limited that is leil which is also recognized as an issuer of lei by the reserve bank of india under the payment and settlements systems act 2007 so that is uh, all about the multiple choice questions that are based on 11th of january 2021 uh, i also would like to inform you that multiple choice questions that are based on the entire month of december are now available with answers the multiple choice questions and their analysis uh, on the nandi pap thank you